Hello and welcome again to our series of online microbiology classes. My name is Jonas and I am your lecturer here in this channel. Well, if you are new to our channel and you seem to like the contents of our videos, kindly hit that like and subscribe button. And if you would like to be posted every single time that we're uploading new contents, kindly hit that notification bell on the side. Well, without further ado, for today, ang pag-uusapan natin is how to diagnose infectious diseases. Based from your previous subjects in your nursing course, you have understood that the blueprint of the nursing practice basically is your nursing process. And one of the part of your nursing process is your diagnosis. However, before you start diagnosing different clients, you need to understand that your diagnosis is as good as your assessment. Stressing the fact that your assessment is an important factor in activating the total uh, nursing process, starting from your, again, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, up till evaluation. In order for you to diagnose, you need to determine first the complete history of your patient, whether it be the history of present illness or your history of past illness, because all of these factors might be important in the current uh, condition that your patient is experiencing. After that, after th uh, taking different subjective data based from your interview, you need to validate those data by performing your physical assessment. You have thought about the ways on how to go about with your physical assessment starting from head to toe. After that, you will specifically evaluate the signs and symptoms that your patients are experiencing. After which, in order to have a conclusive data, you need to verify and validate all of those previous data obtained through your uh, different uh, diagnostic procedure. Comes our specimen selection processing. Dito na tayo kukuha ng mga specimen from our patient. But what exactly is a clinical specimen. When we talk about clinical specimen, we are pertaining to any produced by your patient. That might include your blood, your urine, your feces, even your sputum and your cerebrospinal fluid, and many more. We will talk about them later. That is collected basically from the patient in order to diagnose infection as well as the prognosis. What are you saying, sir? Uh, should, should diagnosis be only done once? No. You can do several diagnostic procedures, even the same uh, diagnostic procedure to one patient alone. Primarily to monitor the prognosis of his or her condition. Kaya pwede yun. Now, what are the qualities of your spe uh, clinical specimen? Number one, it should be of highest quality. Why? I would like you to understand that the findings of your laboratory workups to be performed is as good as the clinical specimen that you are providing them because that basically will be their platform on how they will work and how they will somehow scrutinize all your clinical specimen in order to find the causative agent of the disease of your client. Kaya especially uh, in the clinical setup, when you are to submit your specimen, you should make sure that it is of utmost quality. Next, in the process of collecting all the specimen, it is a must that you are not to harm, number one, your patient, number two, you or other members of the healthcare team that is collecting that particular clinical specimen. What are your roles as a healthcare professional together with all the healthcare mem or the members of the healthcare team in the process of submitting your clinical specimen? Ganito yan. Before you request a particular diagnostic procedure, of course, the captain of the ship must order that particular um, diagnostic procedure. You cannot simply request a diagnostic procedure out of your own uh, judgment. So the physician will now determine a particular diagnostic procedure that should be undertaken in 
uh, the case of your patient. He or she or the physician will determine if there is an infectious disease requiring the submission of your clinical specimen. Also, after your physician will now order that particular diagnostic procedure, you are to request that diagnostic procedure through your different requesting uh, modalities. For bigger hospitals, most of the time, uh, the nurses will use a centralized requesting system wherein they will file a request based from the doctor's order that will run and directly be sent to your cl uh, clinical micro or clinical laboratory or your pathology lab. Later, we will talk about your pathology lab. Now, upon requesting, based from the orders of the doctors, you are to select the appropriate specimen. What am I talking about? For example, the patient was diagnosed with UTI. Of course, you are not to ask uh, your um, med tech or some, some qualified members of the healthcare team to obtain, well, uh, fecal material or even sputum collection because your problem is your urine, urinary tract infection. Nga. So, you need to select the appropriate type of specimen that you are to request in the laboratory. Next. To whoever is qualified or, or the qualified healthcare professional must select the appropriate specimen in the process collecting the specimen properly and transporting that particular specimen going to your laboratory for examination. Later, we will specify specific practices on how uh, different members of the healthcare team will collect that specimen correctly and transport it appropriately. Next, upon uh, examining your specimen, and now that we have findings, it should already or immediately or promptly, as soon as the results are available, it should be promptly reported to your physician. Why? Because the treatment plan will be based from the, the diagnostic procedure as well as your assessment. Kaya nga, in order to activate your nursing process or your basically your process, you need your result for the diagnostic procedure. Kaya once it's available and your laboratory at times will prompt you that the part that particular uh, lab work is available or the result of that particular lab work is available immediately report it to your physician so that your physician will have an idea regarding the result that was obtained you also need to understand that during the process of collection kanina your qualified member of the healthcare team i'm saying qualified member primarily because at times Nurses will be able to collect the specimen, but most of the time, it's your uh, lab technologists, med technologists, and pathologists that collects uh, the specimen or even the physicians themselves. Kaya I'm saying qualified healthcare professional. But regardless of whoever they are, they should exercise extreme precaution during the collection and transport of the specimen, such as following standard precaution. Primarily because this specimen are considered to be infected, regardless if, if it's indeed an infectious specimen or not. The mere fact that you have an specimen, that means you are to secure them, not to cause any cross-contamination. Cross-contamination on their part para maging pure pa rin ang culture and spreading that particular pathogen on the outside environment. So you're protecting both ways. Kaya dapat mag-exercise ng extra caution in collecting as well as transporting your specimen. And lastly, all your specimens should be sealed or should be uh, placed in a uh, liquid proof container particularly if the specimen is liquid in nature however if it's solid you are also required to put it in a lit and puncture proof uh, uh, containers especially if, if uh, there are sharp objects inside that particular specimen also in order to secure and prevent leakage do the uh, double sealing technique meaning you will put your specimen on a primary container and seal it up 
and then that primary container will be sealed on a secondary container. In case there will be untoward breakage of the primary container, may sasalong pangalawang layer to prevent uh, the contamination of your specimen as well as the spread of your pathogens. During the earlier part of our discussion, it was stressed that there are basically three major components in order for you to have a quality specimen. Una, dapat tama yung specimen na pinagkuhanan mo. Meaning, you have selected the right specimen to collect in order to rule out or to determine or to locate that particular pathogen. Number two, you should have collected it properly. And number three, you should have transported it to the laboratory properly. Because if there is faulty collection, faulty transmission, it might result to the absence of the etiology. Meaning, Unang-una, mali yung pinagkunan mo. It is not the part wherein it's infected. Anong makukuha mong pathogen? Basically, wala. Therefore, even though you will perform different examinations or different diagnostic procedure, you will not be able to point out what indeed is the exact causative agent of your disease. Number two, if you have not collected it properly, different microflora will be included on your specimen or in your sample. And that microflora might overpopulate and dominate your pathogen, making it hard for you uh, to diagnose or to pinpoint or to isolate the causative agent. But I would like to uh, tell you this. It was discussed from our previous lessons that even your normal microflora might cause a disease in, 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 in cases such as an opportunistic pathogen or even a super infection. That's why you should be cautious in collecting your specimen because we would, not, we would want to rule out the possibility that there will be masking of the, normal mic of the pathogen by your normal microflora. Pero, if, there, if you are indeed sure that there is no contamination or inclusion of your normal microflora during your uh, specimen collection, and still after testing, it is one of your microflora that is dominant on your culture. That means there was a breach or your, or your microflora evolved to be an opportunistic pathogen or there was super infection. Kaya dapat you are careful in collecting your specimen to rule out these kinds of things so that we will be able we will be uh, able to secure what indeed is the causative agent and number three all of these factors might interfere in the identification of our causative agent baka report natin ay this particular microflora invaded the patient that's why it's the causative agent however na mask lang pala yung pathogen and you've uh, medicated the patient according to what will kill or limit the growth of your microflora while the pathogen yet unidentified will not be able or you will not be able to exterminate or uh, eradicate this causative agent. Will the disease progress? Yes, because you have simply killed someone who's innocent. What exactly are your steps in order for you to select your uh, specimen properly, collect it properly, and transport it properly. Number one, there should be proper selection of the specimen. You need, based from the doctor's orders, you need to verify the orders if indeed it is the necessary laboratory procedure in order for you to diagnose the causative agent. Again, what am I saying? Will you get a urine sample for a patient that was admitted because of sore throat? or inflamed tonsils or tonsillitis for that matter? Of course not. That's why you need to select the proper um, <clears throat> diagnostic uh, exam that your patient needs. Number two, properly and uh, carefully collecting your specimen on the site where suspected pathogen is most likely to be found and the contamination is likely to occur. What am I trying to say? Going back, I remember uh, during my second year college days, I was having my duty at a particular hospital. Then uh, fever spiked in me. And then after examination, they saw that my right tonsil already is inflamed and has exudates. 
So in order to examine my tonsil, they obtained a throat culture or a throat swab. So saan mo isa swab? Can you swab it on the left side? No, because the inflamed area and the one that is with exudates or pus is the right side. Kaya saan mo kukunin? The right side as well. What do you mean by properly and carefully? You only need to swab the infected area. Meaning, at the process wherein you are inserting that particular swab, you are not to have contact in any uh, any part of uh, your mouth in order to uh, not, or in order for you not to collect any normal microflora. Kaya kailangan diretso sa site of infection. Then upon swabbing that site of infection, gently remove it again without having contact doon sa mga surrounding areas because that might contaminate your 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 specimen so you need to collect it properly and carefully next is to collect an appropriate site that was already specified a while ago uh, whenever possible you need to obtain the specimen before an antimicrobial therapy because antimicrobial therapy based from your previous uh, uh, lessons antimicrobes will kill your pathogen so in order for you to have uh, the, the best quality of specimen, kunin mo habang hindi pa ginagamot as much as possible. However, not all of the times this will be applicable because there might be times that curing the patient from infection takes higher priority than obtaining your culture. That's why as much as possible, collect it before uh, using an, or being the patient being under antimicrobial therapy. Another there was this time, uh, or for all uh, surgical procedures, you are performing surgical timeouts. Uh, what exactly am I saying? You will understand more when you have your perioperative nursing. But upon performing your surgical timeouts, you are to introduce the patient to the whole surgical team and also mention what procedure as well as diagnostic procedure is needed to be done. For example, tissues should be cultured or should be collected and cultured from the patient. So, bago mo lagyan ng antiseptic, ng disinfectant, yung exact site wherein there is infection, you need to right away collect that particular tissue in order for it to be examined. What am I trying to say? For example, I have a wound here, a pus, or, or sa Tagalog, a uh, pigsa. And I would like to determine the causative agent of the pigsa. However, it, al it already have ruptured. Now, uh, during the surgery, of course, it will be uh, cleaned with an antiseptic. So, if you have cleaned that particular area that you would like to examine, what microorganisms will you be able to see? Wala na. Kaya, wala nang sense ang paggawa ng diagnostic. That's why before an antimicrobial therapy or a dis application of disinfectant, you need to obtain your culture right away. Now, sir, what will happen? Kagaya ng sinabi mo kanina that not all the times pwedeng mauna ang culture before your antimicrobial therapy. You need to inform the laboratory na, Hey, laboratory personnel, this specimen was taken after X number of days of antimicrobial therapy so that they will be aware that there is already a treatment done. Kaya, uh, they will be able to adjust their findings and their conclusion based from your report as well as your specimen. Next, dahil gusto nga nating makuha ang microorganisms at its peak, of course, obtain the specimen during the acute stage, pinakamalala, pinakagrabing stage ng condition. Because it is assumed that this is also the period wherein your microorganisms is at its peak growth or peak amount of number. Kaya mas marami kang makukuha, mas marami kang ma-isolate na, na microorganisms, you will be able to have a quality specimen. Siyempre, hindi lang tayo concerned sa quality of your specimen but also to the welfare of your patient. That's why as previously mentioned, you are to avoid harm, discomfort, as well as, of course, undue embarrassment. We are treating the patient holistically. Hindi lang tayo pwedeng we are to obtain uh, specimen like, 
Hey patient, I'm just gonna get blood. I'm just gonna get this. I need your urine. I, w I need your piss now. Hindi tayo ganon. We need to provide privacy and secure to our patient that all this specimen will be directly submitted to your uh, clinical laboratory and that uh, we need to avoid harm as much as we can and discomfort in collecting all these specimens to your patient. And if it's a must, you, mu you might need to provide privacy for example you're asking for for a urine culture you are not to ask the patient to urinate publicly but rather look for a place wherein he or she will be able to urinate well okay that's what i'm pointing here now if if that particular specimen collection such as your urine or your sputum were in the patient will be the one collecting your specimen make sure that you have uh, provided adequate instruction on how the patient will collect the specimen particularly for sputum and urine later as we proceed to our discussion i will give you the uh procedures on how to collect these kinds of specimen. Yun yung ibibigay yung instruction to your patients. Next, is that you should obtain sufficient quality or quantity. What do I mean by that? For example, you would like to have uh, blood culture. Scanty blood sample will not be enough in order to run uh, this blood to all those tests that you requested. So based from the manuals provided by your uh, clinical microbiology laboratory or your pathology lab, you should abide how much blood do you need, how much urine do you need, what will be the volume of the urine that you need, or the cerebrospinal fluid, depending on their protocols and their manuals that was provided. We are to abide because they already know the optimum amount of your specimen that needs to be taken in order for them to uh, examine them properly. So, dapat sufficient. Because, for example, you have obtained blood sample. E konti lang. Because you are already uh, pitying your patient because uh, he or she is experiencing pain. However, because of that pity that you felt, the amount of specimen was not enough to perform all the the uh, examination procedure that you have requested. It will uh, prompt you to do another specimen uh, acquisition. So will not will uh, will that particular error uh, double the pain of the patient? Yes. Kaya I think it will be better if you will already collect adequate. Uh, amount of specimen in order to harm the patient lesser okay kasi those are samples of invasive procedure that is required for uh, specimen acquisition such as your blood sample so you should obtain the optimum or enough amount or sufficient quantity of your specimen and lastly you are to place all specimen regardless where they were from kung Kung sterile ba yung area na pinanggalingan niya or hindi, regardless, you are to place your specimen in a sterile culture. Why? Because we are preventing growth of different microorganism that is not your pathogen. Kasi pagka hindi sterile ang container, the, the microbes present in your container might be the one to proliferate and that might mask or interfere in the identification of your pathogen. Kaya make sure that your containers are sterile. In line with having a sterile container, syempre dapat we need to protect your specimen from the outside environment. Preventing different microbes that are suspended in the air or in different surfaces that, that might contaminate your specimen. Again, preventing the proliferation of different microbes that is not your causative agent or your pathogen behind the disease. Para mas maganda ang maging result. Next, uh, you are to label your specimen properly. What do you mean by properly? You are to put the patient's name as well as particular identification number, the name of the requesting physician, and the specimen that was submitted. You are not only to put urine, 
wound culture, or uh, especially for wound culture, you need to specify the exact location. Hindi pwedeng generic like wound culture because there might be wound at the back, at the elbow, uh, at the upper extremities. You need to specify what what type of specimen you have submitted to them or uh, drainage of what particular area so that we can be more specific also you need to indicate the name of the person who've collected the specimen and the time and the date that it was submitted and the time and date that is it was collected so that uh, every single member of the healthcare team involved in the processing of your specimen will be aware about the uh, flow and what happened in between collection and transport Next, of course, as previously stated, we need to make sure that our specimen is as fresh as possible. So, as much as you can, you are to deliver it to your clinical microbiology lab or your pathology lab as soon as possible. So, we are now to study your different clinical specimen, starting of course with your blood. Your blood basically is a mixture of liquid as well as uh, formed elements. When I say liquid, I'm talking about your plasma and your formed elements being your WBC, uh, RBC, as well as platelet. And you all know based from your understanding in your anatomy and physiology that if uh, you let this blood coagulate, the liquid form or the liquid portion is what you call your serum wherein there will be absence of different coagulating factors. So that's something that is nice to know. However, why would we want to collect your blood? We would like to check for pathogens present in your blood. Ibig sabihin, may microorganisms sa blood, kaya nagpakuha tayo ng blood sample for identification of your disease pathogens. You need to determine if there is presence of bacteremia or septicemia. Sir, are those two different terms? Well, strictly speaking, they are different terms. That's why you need to understand what is bacteremia and what is septicemia. Bacteremia is basically just a presence of microorganisms or bacteria in your blood. It may occur in different or various stages of your diseases. And mind you, it is not dangerous and it's self-limiting. Meaning, if your different uh, WBC components as well as your immune system is activated, it will be naturally flushed out and destroyed in your blood system. Wherein, the bacteria will not be able to produce any toxin. Kaya, walang signs and symptoms of infection. Minsan, at times, there is already activation of your uh, uh, hyperthermic mechanism wherein your body will slightly increase its temperature uh, in an effort to eliminate these microorganisms within the blood. Well, normal yon, Kasi sa katawan mo, yun ang kanilang uh, automatic response in the presence of a microbe. But strictly speaking, your bacteremia is self-limiting. And uh, even without treatment, it will be eradicated by your body through normal defense mechanisms. Septicemia on the other hand is the presence of multiple amount of bacteria in your blood sir is this uh, life threatening yes it is life threatening it might even lead to a condition called septic shock pagka kasi marami na masyadong uh, microorganism or bacteria in circulating in your blood that means you have systemic infection it might be deadly on your part kaya agaran dapat ang prompt treatment of antibiotics for this matter because uh, it is basically potentially life threatening because bacteria are now able to secrete toxins in your body you will now have different manifestations such as high grade or fever for that matter chills uh, uh, prostrations tachypnea tachycardia which are all manifestations of your shock hypotachytachy you all know this Okay, to diagnose bacteremia or septicemia, it is important for us to obtain three 
culture for a span of 24 hours. Sir, bakit po po kailangan ng free culture? Primarily because we would like to determine the prognosis. Because again, bacteremia is self-limiting. Meaning, in a span of 24 hours, it will improve on its own. While septicemia, it, uh, the number of microorganism or bacteria will continue to grow. Kaya tatlo, at least three uh, specimens, blood, blood culture or blood specimens will be obtained in a span of 24 hours in order to differentiate uh, bacteremia from septicemia. Mind you, what is your responsibility when collecting blood? Yes, I know that most of the time you observe that medical technologists are the one doing the collection of blood, but there will be times that you as nurses will also be the one to collect these blood samples. Anong dapat mong tandaan? Remember, you are puncturing below your skin and... Uh, accessing your venous system or your blood system, circulatory system. And supposedly dapat walang microorganism dyan. What am I trying to point out? Strict aseptic technique should be practiced and should be implied. That will protect your uh, blood from contracting uh, different microorganisms from the outside environment papasok sa yung systemic circulation and it will also protect the integrity of your culture preventing different microorganisms to infestate your culture para maganda yung maging specimen mo also limit uh, the area should be thoroughly cleansed or prior to uh, your um specimen acquisition the usual area for your uh, blood sample to be taken is here on your anticupital area so paano mo lilinisin yung anticupital area in a concentric manner meaning you will start at the area where you are to puncture then using a circular motion pupunta ka papunta sa sides and Mind you, hindi natin binabalik ang uh, pumunta na sa perimeter na swab pabalik sa gitna because that will promote cross contamination. We are not to uh, uh, clean your specimen just randomly, but rather there is a technique from the point of access, circular motion, going outwards and outwards without going back to the center. Okay, that is the technique for cleaning your specimen site. Also, you are to limit the exposure of the specimen, transferring it right away to a specified sterile specimen container and immediately transporting it to the laboratory. Mind you, blood should be kept approximately at a, uh, a temperature equal to 37 degrees Celsius. Basically, that is your body temperature and blood should not be uh, refrigerated or be kept frozen because microorganisms might die even your formed elements. This will be your urine. Based from our discussion with regards to your microflora, your urine that is in your bladder is well strictly or it's supposed to be sterile in nature because your uh, urinary system is supposed to be sterile in nature with the exemption of the distal portion of your urethral opening because your distal portion of your urethral opening is considered to be contaminated with different microorganisms. Having said that, sir, E doon dadaan lahat ng urine output mo. Yes, that's true. So is there a possibility for you to contaminate your urine? Uh, your urine as your specimen? Yes, there is. So how will we eliminate that possibility? We have this term you call midstream clean catch. Sir, what is midstream clean catch? That is basically a technique on how your patient or, or on how you are to instruct your patient to obtain your specimen. Isa-isahin natin yung word dun sa midstream clean catch. Let's start with clean. As you can see in your PowerPoint presentation, we have utilized a female client. However, this will also apply to male client. Magkaiba lang ang anatomic presentation but the concept is the same. Number one, you should clean your external urinary meatus. You would uh, like to try to eliminate as most uh, na, na microflora present in that area before expulsion of your urine para walang, cross, walang contamination na mangyayari to your culture. So how are you to do that? For female, you can use uh, uh, 
medically approved or uh, well cleaning materials that are conducive that will not harm your uh, genital urinary area and uh, you are to wipe your genital urinary area from area that is considered to be clean going to the area that is considered to be dirty. Kaya dapat ang wiping nyo, it's not from your anal region going to your uh, genital or uh, your, your uh, vaginal region. But rather, it's from your urethra, vaginal region going back to your, your anal region. After wiping it, you have now fulfilled the cleaning part. Sabi natin, midstream clean catch. So, punta tayo sa midstream. How do you do midstream? You understand that urine serves as a flushing agent. Flushing different microflora along your urinary tract. So, the first portion that you have voided should be discarded. Wag mong sasaluhin sa specimen cup mo. Yung una mong ihi. Because that will clear, that will flush away your normal microflora. Then, during the uh, middle portion while you are urinating, you can now put your specimen cup and capture or catch your urine. Kaya siya tinawag na midstream clean catch. So you are basically to clean your urethral opening, then catching uh, the or discarding the initial output and catching the output after that. So your urine specimen must be processed at least or must be processed within 30 minutes of collection or if you have uh, a refrigerator, you can refrigerate it on a temperature uh, approximately around 4 degrees Celsius and it might be uh, viable for examination for another 24 hours. Pero pag wala, again, 30 minutes lang dapat madala na sa laboratory. Uh, this is a useful fact especially if your patient is at their house and uh, without any means, uh, hindi sila makapunta ng hospital or if the laboratory is closed as of the moment, you can uh, instruct your patient to obtain urine, midstream clean catch, then refrigerate it approximately in a temperature that na equals sa 4 degrees Celsius and that will be uh, good up till uh, 24 hours. Pagka naglapse ng 24 hours, you are to ask your patient to obtain another specimen. This will be your cerebrospinal fluid. When we talk about cerebrospinal fluid, this is the fluid present in your dura mater. So in order for us to access that particular area, a sterile needle will puncture from your back going to your dura mater. So, uh, pag pinag-uusapan ang cerebrospinal fluid, ang dapat pumapasok sa isip mo is that we are assessing your nervous system, particularly your brain as well as the surrounding uh, organs or surrounding tissues. We have this uh, medical diagnosis called your meningitis which is basically the infection of your meninges that surrounds your brain and spinal column. Yun ang uh, meningitis. We would like also to uh, determine encephalitis meaning inflammation of the brain itself or well combination pwedeng uh, meningoencephalitis so what am i trying to say we would like to obtain culture on those fluid that are circulating in your nervous system para makita mo meron bang bacteria meron bang microorganisms that causes infection or meningitis or encephalitis or even both so how are you to obtain your uh, culture most of the time, it's your anesthesiologist or your attending physician who will obtain uh, your CSF through what you call your lumbar tap, wherein you will ask the patient to position him or herself in a bent position as if they are assuming a position of a shrimp so that your vertebra will have their space open and you will puncture that particular area uh, up till your dura mater wherein there is your uh, where your cerebrospinal fluid is present. What am I trying to say? We don't like to cross-contaminate this area because this might worsen or increase the chances. Baka nung tinest mo, wala siyang meningitis bago mo itest. But then because of faulty practice of not pra or, 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 or you not practicing properly your aseptic technique, you in, you contaminated that particular area tapos nag-result sa meningitis. That is your fault as the medical professional. That's why you need to secure or to always keep in check that you are performing it in an aseptic manner. Okay? Next, uh, 
after withdrawing your uh, specimen, you need to rush your specimen immediately to your laboratory and must not be refrigerated because different uh, organisms might be too fragile for it to be refrigerated. Kaya pagka-collect ng specimen, label promptly, correctly, completely, it should be immediately transferred to your laboratory. And what's important is that because there is a sense of urgency kasi uh, neural function ang pinag-uusapan. Once result is already available, it should be readily referred or uh, it, it should be readily referred to your clinical or your attending physician because your physician again will base your treatment uh, uh, design or how you are to treat your patient based from the finding of your um, cerebrospinal fluid culture or specimen. Kaya dapat mabilisan. Primary report should all uh, should promptly be delivered to your doctor then once the final copy of the report arrives you are still to inform your doctor about the written findings of the clinical specimen that was submitted prompt submission and reporting of your uh, findings for your cerebrospinal fluid is a must because time is a factor or a key factor to save your brain from irreparable damage Kaya dapat mabilis ang pagkilos, pagkakuha, label, transfer properly. Then once result is available, even though it's a wet reading or a primary reading, inform your physician. Next specimen is your sputum. When we talk about your sputum, it's basically pus that accumulated deep within your lungs uh, that is usually used to diagnose different lower respiratory tract infections such as your pneumonia as well as your TB. <clears throat> Mind you that the passageway of your uh, <clears throat> respiratory tract or your respiratory tract joins with your digestive system, basically exiting through your nose and your mouth. Now your sputum will be collected or, or, or it will be produced through your mouth so that the answer be big. What am I trying to imply? Your mouth is full, is known to have different microflora or different microorganisms for that matter. In order to eliminate all those microorganisms prior to culture, because kung padadaanin mo lang yung sputum mo dun sa bibig, okay, the different microorganisms present in your mouth might cross, might contaminate your specimen that's why what will you instruct your patient prior to obtaining your culture or prior to obtaining your sputum you need to perform oral hygiene after performance of your oral hygiene that will somehow lessen if not completely eradicate your uh, microorganisms present in your mouth open your specimen capsule then put your mouth as well as your lips uh, inside the cap in, inside the uh, specimen uh, container then force uh, using a little bit of force expectorate that uh, cuff or that sputum in uh, putting your sputum output directly inside your specimen container then immediately close it afterwards to avoid exposure to the outside environment give the sample to your caregiver right away then well if you're at home it can be refrigerated uh, as long as it's tightly sealed now there will be times that your patient, because of their poor understanding or poor technique on how they are to expectorate, they might give you a specimen na saliva lang. And it will not be effective because you will not be able to determine the causative agent of your respiratory tract infection. So how to determine if it's a sputum or it's just saliva? Look at its consistency. Your saliva basically is loose and watery in nature while your sputum is gooey, thick in nature. So yun yung isasubmit natin. Uh, next will be your throat and nasal swab. Ito yung usong-usong ngayon, particularly your nasal swab because th this is what is being performed for what you call mass testing for identification of COVID-19 patient. But how is it performed? For uh, throat culture, you are to use a tongue depressor 
to well depress your tongue so that you your tongue will not have contact with your uh, swab then open your swab observe for that particular portion of your throat that is infected remove your swab stick from the packet then carefully but firmly rub your swab stick directly to the infected part then gently pull it out of the mouth without having contact in all the uh, orifices of your mouth as well as your tongue so that it won't be contaminated avoid having contact with your gums with your cheeks with your teeth as you withdraw the swab stick then directly insert the swab stick back to your uh, pocket and whatever bottle or specimen ca uh, cup you have then transport your specimen in the laboratory as soon as possible you may refrigerate uh, it if transport is delayed same is true with your nasal uh, swab however for your nasal swab in order for you to uh, uh, make the patient more comfortable you are to instruct him what he or she is about to do because you will access the nasopharyngeal area an area post a little bit posterior at the back of the nasal area that might cause a little bit of discomfort and might initiate sneezing reflex kaya uh, instruct your patient so that he or she will be aware then same procedure uh, gently but firmly insert your swab stick then uh, get that culture on that particular nasopharyngeal area then withdraw okay so as much as you can make your hand stable but you cannot avoid it that it will come in contact on different surfaces but don't uh, withdraw it on a circular portion derecho lang so that you might limit the contact on different surfaces preventing the contamination of your culture as well as cross-contamination of different areas. Next will be your wound specimen or your wound culture. For your wound specimen, you have the following steps. Number one, you are to clean the margins. I repeat, the margins of the wound, not the wound itself. Because putting antiseptic on the wound itself or disinfecting the wound itself would destroy the pathogen. And you will not be able to identify the pathogen if they're already destroyed. So, ang lilinisin mo lang yung sa paligid muna. Then, as much as you can, aspirate is preferable than swab sticks. So if you are to aspirate, aspirate from the depth of the wound using uh, a sterile syringe. Itutusok mo, as you can see from your uh, PowerPoint presentation, you are to insert the syringe, then aspirate. After that, uh, if you would like to collect some tissues of, your per of, of that particular wound, you can use a curette. A curette is like a spoon, pero engineered differently, mas maliit, pero ang function parang spoon. Kukutsarain mo yung tissue that you would like to uh, uh, assess using a curette to obtain the, uh, the tissue from the base of the wound so that you will be able to send a specimen. Now, if freely swabs uh, is the only option that you have, you can still perform swab uh, culture for your uh, wound specimen. However, uh, swab specimen usually dries fast and uh, at times it's frequently contaminated by different microflora. That's why as much as possible we would like to avoid or we are discouraging your swab culture for wound. Uh, it's preferable na aspiration and through curette para magkaroon ka ng tissue biopsy. Okay? That will be for your wound culture. Next will be your GC culture, particularly obtaining a gonococci culture. Well, the causative agent uh, is most of the time your Neisseria gonorrhea. You need to understand that Neisseria gonorrhea being the causative agent of this condition na gusto nating itis, your Neisseria gonorrhea is microaerophilic as well as capnophilic. Mind you, when we are having or taking our specimen, we would like to preserve the integrity of our pathogen so that we would be able to identify them properly. Okay, that's why... Uh, you need to follow the fol uh, these steps in obtaining your GC culture. Number one is that there is a specific type of swab stick that will be uh, necessary to perform GC culture. Because if you will use a normal swab stick, it might contain uh, fats that might destroy 
the integrity of your Neisseria gonorrhoe. So, dapat yung swab stick na uh, indicated for the pro for that particular uh, collection. After collecting, the swab should be immediately inoculated onto your Tayer Martin or Martin Lewis medium and incubated in an area wherein carbon dioxide is available because again, they are capnophilic by nature. Approximately 5 to 10% of the atmosphere should be uh, containing uh, carbon dioxide. Then, after inoculating, as you can see in the picture, you are to keep the bottle upright para hindi masira ang integrity ng inyong Neisseria gonorrhoe. Then, it should be incubated overnight with a temperature approximately the same of your body, 37 degrees Celsius. However, it should not be uh, refrigerated. Okay? Mind you, kailangan lang natin incubate, temperature 37 degrees, but not refrigerated. That's your GC culture. Next will be your fecal specimen. Alam na natin to, we are collecting your fecal material. So should it be sterile? No, it is not. However, as much as possible, limit the exposure of your fecal material. It's ideally done in a laboratory setup in order to prevent decrease in temperature. But ayaw natin lumamig yung ating fecal material. Primarily because with the drop of temperature, there will be increase uh, uh, there will be a uh, decrease in your pH, making your pH more acidic in nature. Mind you, your um, the, the different microbes or microorganisms present in your anal region that you are testing when you are having your fecalysis is usually uh, alkali, alkali, uh, or likes an alkalinic environment. Because of that, we need to maintain a pH approximately 7.0. Ibig sabihin, basic ang environment natin. With the dropping of your temperature, that might acidify the nature of the fecal material, therefore destroying your pathogen. Wala ka na makikita. Kaya ideally speaking, it should be done on a laboratory setup so that it might be brought immediately after collection. Kanina pa natin pinag-uusapan kung kanino dadalhin ang specimen. We have identified the ways on how to collect specimen, collect it properly, transport it properly, and select it properly, and what type of specimen are we trying to obtain. After that, palaging sinasabi that the specimen should be promptly transported to your pathology department or your what you call the lab. Ito yung sinasabi, kindly bring the specimen on the laboratory you are pertaining to your pathology lab. Your pathology lab is basically led by a pathologist, a physician who specializes in the field of pathology. Pag pinag-usapan yung pathology based from our last discussion, it is the study of structural and functional manifestations of different diseases. Kaya dinedetermine nila ang causative agent by studying your specimens. Basically, your pathology department is divided into two major uh, sub-departments. You have your anatomical pathologies and your clinical pathology. Your start tayo sa anatomical pathology. Your anatomical pathology will involve surgical pathology, cytopathology, forensic pathology, basically that's autopsy, and oral and max maxillofacial uh, pathology. Anong ginagawa ng mga anatomical pathologists natin or mga lab assistants or pathology assistants ang mga nandito? They examine specimen that will involve observation of different organ and tissues. Ibig sabihin, visualization, phenotyping. They would like to check the presentation, the structural formation. Okay? Phenotype ang pinag-uusapan nila dito. The morphology, yan. Pumapasok ang morphology, the shape, the orientation. Ang lahat ng gumagawa niyan is your anatomical pathology department. Ang ginagawa naman ng clinical pathology department which includes your clinical chemistry, your hematology, blood bank, as well as clinical microbiology is examining different fluids. Checking for... Uh, Different fluids such as your blood, your urine, your tissues, uh, tissue hemogenates, you have your, uh, well, all of those will be processed in your chemistry department, microbiology department, hematology, even blood bank, as well as uh, molecular pathology department. All of this, ang mga madalas na nagtatrabaho dito are your medical residents as well as your medical technologist or your lab tech. So, what are the responsibilities of your uh, 
Clinical uh, Microbiology Laboratory. The responsibilities of your clinical microbiology lab are the following. Of course, upon reception of your specimen, they should process the specimen right away. Then, they should be able to isolate the causative pathogens, identify the pathogens, and perform antimicrobial susceptibility, testing when appropriate uh, to do so. What am I trying to say? Given na yung processing, given na yung identification, as well as isolation of your pathogen. But what is this perform antimicrobial susceptibility? Mind you, prior to prescribing an antimicrobial agent or an antibiotic for that matter, you need to determine the susceptibility of your microorganism. Mapapatay ba ng gamot na to ang microbes mo? Dito pumapasok yung antimicrobial susceptibility test. Wherein your CML or your clinical microbiology lab will determine which of the following available antibiotics might take effect or might effectively eradicate your microorganism present. Sila rin yung gumagawa nito. How do they do this? Number one, they check the specimen on a macroscopic level. Simply observing. After that, you are to examine in a microscopic level. Titignan yung mga microorganisms present and the micromolecular structures of your specimen. After that, you are to inoculate the specimen in an appropriate culture media. Yung culture media natin that will, uh, uh, well, culture your uh, specimen or the, the microorganism so that you will be able to uh, replicate them or for them to increase in number so that you will be able to determine different tests uh, para sa iyong uh, specimen or para sa iyong microorganism. Kaya mo sila pinaparami kasi itetest mo rin sila at the end. So, what are the other sections of your clinical microbiology lab? You have your bacteriology section which is involved for bacterial infection. You have your viral section involved for different viruses. Mycology for uh, different fungal infection. Immunology and parasitology which is involved in the immune responses of their body as well as your uh, inf uh, uh, contamination or infestation of different protozoals as well as helminths for your parasitology section. To sum it all up, today we have discussed how are we processing or performing diagnosing of your infectious diseases in that we have specified the different steps that we need to take in order for us to perform diagnosis and uh, reiterated the importance of uh, 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 exemplary assessment techniques from different members of the healthcare team. Also, we have defined what a clinical specimen is, wherein we said that it's basically your patient's produce that we are uh, we are examining in order in order to determine the causative agent or the culprit behind the patient's condition. We have presented the different roles that your healthcare professionals. Uh, assume when uh, doing your specimen collection. Sabi natin, the physician will order. You as the nurse will uh, now input the order on your system. You are to select the appropriate testing procedure. Then the qualified healthcare professional should collect the appropriate uh, specimen and transport it uh, promptly and correctly, then the laboratory technician or the laboratory uh, personnel will process your specimen and when findings is available, you need to make your physician informed so that he or she will be able to uh, determine the course of action or the course of treatment that needs to be uh, enforced. Also, uh, special consideration with the caution in terms of collecting as well as transporting your specimen because we are preventing your specimen to be contaminated and for your specimen to cross-contamination. Cross and lastly, that all this uh, specimen should be placed in a sterile container as well as a puncture-proof or, or a leak-proof container. Uh, then, we have uh, specified when, how, and uh, the what to do on collection of your specimen, uh, particularly highlighting three. Sabi natin, dapat proper specimen, proper collection, as well as proper transport. 
We have also discussed the different types of your specimen, starting with your blood, then differentiating bacteremia, which is presence of uh, bacteria in your blood, uh, versus septicemia, presence of numerous bacteria leading to different disease conditions that might be lethal. We have also discussed your urine and uh, focused on what midstream clean catch is and how it is being done. We have also discussed your cerebrospinal fluid and your responsibilities that it should be performed in an aseptic manner and once the CSF is available, transfer it right away because multiple microorganisms might be too fragile to survive in that particular environment. Next will be your sputum wherein we have discussed how you are to instruct your patient in acquisition of your sputum sample. Ang sabi natin, your patient should perform oral hygiene prior to expectorating the sputum in order to prevent contamination. Next will be your throat and nasal swabs wherein we have uh, uh, reiterated the importance of avoiding uh, contact on areas that are not supposed to be touched or not supposed to be swabbed in order to prevent, again, contamination of your specimen as well as cross-contamination to that particular area. Pinag-usapan din natin ang wound on how you are to obtain culture through aspiration, uh, tissue curettage for your tissue biopsy, as well as, well, even though it's not advisable, swabbing. We have also discussed how you are to obtain your GC culture and the parameters on how you are to do your GC culture that after inoculation, dadalhin agad sa Tayer Martin or your Martin Lewis solution and that you are to keep it in a carbon dioxide containing environment because again, your Neisseria gonorrhea is microaerophilic as well as capnophilic. Your fecal specimen is supposed to be done in the laboratory setup so that it can be processed right away to prevent heat from being lost or the uh, uh, or the cooling of your specimen because again as your specimen cools it becomes more acidic in nature killing your pathogens and lastly we have defined your pathology department wherein we have differentiated your clinical pathology fluids versus your anatomical pathology organ and tissues where, where we have also uh, discussed how they are performing examination of your different specimen. With that, I would like to wish you all uh, your, uh, for you to be all safe given the extension of our quarantine period and that I hope you have enjoyed your experience throughout this learning course. Once again, this is Jonas saying that learning is always a fun experience. Goodbye, everybody. God bless.